Aloha and welcome to At The Crossroads. I am your host, Keisha King. It's so good to be with you today to share with these Pacific Resiliency Fellows. They're here to tell us about their second cohort and what we have planned for this year and the coming years right here in Hawaii and all throughout the Pacific. Let's welcome our guests today. I'll have them introduce themselves. <laughs> we have a lot of people here today. Yes. Let's start with these Aloha. two. Aloha. Um, my name is Aaliyah Herman. Thank you so much for having us here today. I am the program manager, so I've been developing and overseeing the Pacific Resiliency Fellows, and I work for KUPU, who is the organization that is um, running the program. Wonderful, Aaliyah. So glad you're here. And? Aloha <clears throat> and Ali. My name is Blodak. I come from Palau, and I'm part and I'm a participant in the Pacific Residency Fellowship. That's amazing. Thank you both so much for being here. And we have two more guests waiting in the wings who we will speak with right after we talk with you guys after our break. So, Aaliyah, please tell us, what exactly is the Pacific Resiliency Fellows? Sure. So the Pacific Resiliency Fellows Program was launched out of the World Conservation Congress that happened here in 2016. When that um, Congress came, we said, how can this mean more for Hawaii than just 10 days? And so the idea was for Kupu, with our mission of working with youth and young professionals to learn, serve, and restore, was maybe we could do something bigger than Hawaii, do something in the Pacific. So we developed this fellowship program as a way to support resilient communities. So how can we help communities across the Pacific become more resilient? What, resilient? what kind of sk skills do they need? What kind of tools can we provide? Okay, so you asked good questions about what can we do to help. Right. But what exactly are you helping? Sure. So, so the, programs, the program targets rising professionals who work in conservation and sustainability. So we have fellows in Hawaii, but also across the Pacific in Palau, um, in Rapa Nui, one of our guests today, um, in the Northern Mariana Islands, in Guam, in American Samoa. So we have all of these different island communities that are facing these different struggles. And one of the things that we heard again and again is capacity, that we don't, there's not a lot of capacity to support, especially people who are there and deeply invested. So one of our first goals of the program was to build local capacity. Mm -hmm. Then from there, we said, you know, what else is needed? And the other thing, there are a couple other things that came up. The other is to build a network. So how mm -hmm. can all of these communities, all of these people working in these communities, facing different challenges, but, but also the same? You know, they have a mm -hmm. lot of shared, how can they be learned from each other? How can they feel supported by each other? That was the second goal. How can we build a network? And the third goal is, you know, we wanted not make this more about just let's help these individuals. Like I want Blodak to do well, obviously, and I want him to be better at what he does, but we want to impact his community as well. So I sort of see them as ambassadors to their right. community. They're coming here and we want them to be able to bring back. So not only all these professional development skills and trainings, but also we've been working to help amplify their real time on the ground work right now. So they bring a project through the program, and that's one of the other key pieces. How can we make them more effective right now in what they're doing, as well as over the long term? So for those who are not familiar with uh, KUPU, can you tell us about that? Sure. KUPU is a nonprofit based here in Honolulu that was founded in 2007 with, you know, our tagline is learn, serve, restore. So really, it's creating a variety of different youth programs, fellowship programs, um, young pr programs for young professionals where they are, and actually the fellowship program is a little bit different than a lot of what we do, but where they are working sort of in the field in many cases, um, you know, learning work, how to work in conservation, but also getting a lot of those other sort of leadership skills, um, mm. professional and personal development skills as well. Okay. So you shared with us what the program seeks to accomplish, and you've explained uh, Kupu a little bit more. So in this first co cohort, how many fellows participated in the program? So we had 13 fellows. Um, and as I mentioned, they're from across the Pacific. And they come, so the, it's set up as a 16-month program. So they come here for 10 days, and mm -hmm. then they go away for a year where they're implementing their project work and also continuing to support each other. They're doing peer-to-peer -peer work. Um, I'm continuing to support them. And then now they've returned for their second session. So this is another 10-day session sort of to bookend it. And then they will have their ho'ike or their, their graduation on Tuesday. But what we're hoping is that that's not the end, but it's just the beginning of what will be sort of ongoing um, 
kind of network and support amongst them and that we can continue to find ways to support them beyond the program. Okay, so again, you've had some um, fellows who participated in the program. This isn't your first cohort. It is our first cohort. It this is. is. This is. So it's our second session of our first cohort. So we are, this is the pilot. So we, <laughs> we talk about them as the hiapo. They're the first one. Mm. So they have really, they've, they've been our guinea pigs, mm -hmm. um, and they've been, very, they've been really awesome about it. And so, yeah, we've really been trying to figure out what works and what doesn't and how to make this meaningful so that we can hopefully replicate. Because the real goal is if you can have cohort after cohort, then you have a broad network that has shared, shared skills, hopefully some shared values, and then maybe eventually they can make a real collective impact on a broader, more global level. That's the goal. And I'm so excited about that. I'm excited that this is your inaugural group, your inaugural cohort, and the hope that annually, I suppose, you will do this? Every two years. So Every because two. it's such it's a six from sort of recruitment to both sessions. So the goal is to be able to run a cohort every two years. Um, but because it's such a new program, we are still trying to raise funds to figure out a way to continue the program. And so, you know, we hope that people can see the impact that it's making, again, both on these amazing individuals who I've been really lucky to get to spend this time with, um, mm -hmm. and you know, also more broadly, and that we can find people who are really willing to invest in the program over the long term. Because it's, yeah. you know, it's not one of those things where you're like, okay, we got rid of you know, 100 acres of invasive bamboo or whatever it is. It's, it's something that you have to invest in to see the results. And so yeah. you know, that can make it sometimes challenging to find the right fit for funders, but we're really hoping people will start to see the impact and that when they I guess, especially get to spend time with these guys, they see their heart, their passion, their talent, mm -hmm. and that they want to help, help us give them more support and give more fellows support in the future. So now... For this cohort, describe the application process to us. What was it like for them to get involved? Oh, well, um, we did, a, again, a lot of networking to try to um, make sure that this opportunity was available for folks, um, you know, in all these different communities. Blood, I can tell you, he comes from a community of 60 people. So when you think about, you know, how do you, how do you reach someone <laughs> like him? Yes. Um, and then, you know, they went through an application process that had essay questions about you know, their work, their commitment. One of the main things we looked for was commitment to place. That all of these fellows, you know, it's not a requirement, but all these fellows were born and raised in this place, and a large percentage of them are also indigenous. So these are people who are deeply committed to these places over the long term. They're not mm -hmm. two-year transplants who just want right. to go travel around. Right. Um, so that was one of the key things, their passion, their commitment, their experience. We were looking for people who could bring something to the table because that they'd already it already works. So this is what we're saying. We're saying rising professionals, people who've had some experience and who we see going further. Um, right. And then we interviewed, we had interviews as well and made our selection, which has been, we are very pleased. <laughs> very, very good. I am super excited for that. So Blodak, are you ready for me to ask you questions? Sure. Yay. <laughs> Tell us why and why was it important for you to take part in this program? Well, uh, as Elio was mentioning, I come from a very small island of Kayamo, and uh, our community has found its way to it where we're losing people. So I, I'm here, and I want to plant a seed in a way at, at our island to make sure that it can reap benefits for the people of Kayamo. And I think this training and opportunity has given me a chance to develop my skills and put some more tools in my toolbox in order to attack some of the things that we are facing challenges. Wonderful. So really, 60 people in your community, that is very different than what we're used to hearing about. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it went uh, from the 1940s, it was about 2,000 people. But um, because there's been lack of opportunity on the island, everybody's kind of been setting out to seek more opportunities. So I think uh, to me, it's about finding a way to bring back the people. And th is that your ultimate goal? Find a way to bring them back? Yes, I mean, uh, that is the ultimate goal, to bring back a lot more people home. That way we can provide better as a community for our environment and whatever is around us. This might be too much of a personal question, but what made you stay? If everyone else is leaving, what made you stay? <laughs> well, home is where the heart is, and my heart lies in Kayal, and I've had the opportunity to visit many places, including Hawaii, to kind of 
deepen my understanding and also <clears throat> build my commitment to Kayaan because it, at the end of the day, it's home. And that's where I would love to spend the rest of my life. That's so beautiful. I can see why he was chosen. Yeah. And he's a, such a great example of sort of what it means to try to build a resilient community. Because so he's working in conservation. He um, mm -hmm. is managing the protected area around there. But so much of his focus, yes, it's about restoring the natural resources there. But it's also, like he said, restoring the people. You mm -hmm. know, and so it's, he's doing things that you might not think would come, like fighting for higher wages for the staff that he has so that they can stay. There's so many kind of pieces of what it means to build a resilient community that extend, you know, beyond the job description of, you know, help bring back the coral and the trees. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think he's just such an incredible example of sort of that holistic kind of approach that needs to be taken. Yeah, that's amazing. And thank you so much for your commitment and hard work and dedication. We know that it is making a difference. Um, do you care to share any successes that you may have had already? Well, um, I've been, we were able to uh, renovate one of our boats, which has helped us uh, do our job more efficiently in a way because we have two marine protected areas that we have to uh, uh, do surveillance around because nowadays everybody's trying to get their share of the fish. So we're, we, we have two marine protected areas that uh, we are now able to conduct surveillance effectively. Like, Wonderful. Yes. And you were a part of making that possible. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I bet. He <laughs> seems like he's being modest. I yeah. think that's a fair assessment. <laughs> well, thank you. That makes a huge difference for everyone involved, if that is a food source and just everything else. Yeah, it's going to make a huge difference. And you're fighting for higher wages as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I, I really want to raise the standards, but it's really hard to raise the standard without raising the wages. And I felt like that's kind of one of the main reasons why a lot of our rangers just came to work and then left after a year of training to mm. join something better. Mm. So that you all provided the training and then... Yes, so we would pay for the training and then we'd take it and go to the national government level. Mm. I see. Yeah, that's not what we want. <laughs> no, we want you to get trained here and then to stay here. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay, so hopefully this next go round, they will do that. Yeah, good for you that you're doing it and that you chose to stay. I know it's going to make a huge difference in the lives of the families that are still there. So thank you for your heart to serve in such a way. And thank you too, Aaliyah, for what you've done um, as the managing manager, yeah. project manager. Se senior, senior program pro manager, whatever, there whatever, whatever <laughs> person who steers them in all different directions and says, hey, do your, yes. do your work and come together. <laughs> and go, oh, no. you, man, with her emails, it's, uh, it's, uh, but it's inspiring to have her to keep on coming because, of course, it, uh, after a year, uh, mm -hmm. trying to reach out to us was a bit of a trouble for her, but I really applaud her for keeping, keeping us tied together so we were able to come back together because yeah. this has been actually a very uh, inspiring group of people that we've worked with, and it helps me push my goals further. Yes, because when you're around people that are helping you toward your goals and also working toward their goals, it makes you want to work a little bit harder, right? And you feel accomplished and feel good about that. So I feel good just sitting next to you guys. So this has been good. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to speak with two other fellows and who are also here, a part of the program from other places. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to be waiting in the wings while we listen to their stories about how they got involved and what they hope to achieve as well. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so Thank much you. for taking the time to hear our story. Yes, indeed. And we're still looking for more funding. Is that right? That is right. That okay. is right. Yeah, for cohort number two. That's we want, right. We want to get another group through and build our network so we can make real change. Awesome. I think that's a good way to end it with you guys. You guys have been perfect for this segment. <laughs> You've been watching At the Crossroads, and I'm your host, Keisha King. We are speaking with the Pacific Resiliency Fellows. <laughs> and we will be right back after this quick break. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome 
a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. <laughs> Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Chip Fletcher. I'm at the University of Hawaii School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology. I'm here to tell you about the four key things you can do to combat climate change. Have smaller families, eat a more plant-based diet, drive less, and fly airplanes less. Thank you very much for your time. Aloha and welcome back to At The Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King, and today we have guests with us from Pacific Resiliency Fellows Program. And so right now we have with us Mana and Tiare. So glad you guys are here to join us today. Thanks for having us. Thank it's you totally... for the invitation. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. We're happy to have you and find out more about this program what all got you involved and interested in doing this, where you're from and all that good stuff too. Okay, so we will start with, you wanna do it ladies first? Right. We'll start with Tiare. Tell us, where are you from? Tirana Korua, Aloha. I'm from Rapa Nui. I'm a lawyer and I'm working in an action plan for climate change. Wonderful. So now with all of that being said, what made you get involved with this program? First of all, it's, I feel like it's a privilege and it's a dream comes true to have this network around the Pacific. It's, it's, I feel the responsibility too. I'm part of a small community in Rapa Nui where 7,500 inhabitants. So for me, it's, I think the most important thing is to see uh, the broad picture, is to see uh, things from outside and to have different opinions, different perspectives. We are facing similar problems. We are, at the same time, we have a lot of differences, but we, we are part of the Pacific and we are part of the world. So we, after you cross this barrier, you just, you are in the boat, you are sailing in the same direction. So it's very nice to be here. Wonderful. So you feel that as though being a part of this program is a privilege. Yeah. Tell us, what are some of the highlights yeah. from the program that you have taken away with? So many. I learned a lot and I share a lot too. So the first year it was very interesting, the system. Um, we have the opportunity to visit amazing places. We, Tell uh, us, what was some of for the For example, in this, uh, we start with Hokulea. So imagine uh, that. So yes. I, just, I just say that. It's, we, we are so privileged to have. We went to Kala too. We visit and we help. Um, um, constructing this uh, fish pond last year. We are mm -hmm. working with the community. We are working with uh, students too. Um, I don't know, and so many things at the same time that you need, I'm pretty sure that we need time to just digest all this information or this knowledge. And we will apply all this stuff uh, eventually and now. So mm -hmm. I feel more confident. Mm -hmm. I have more tools to help my community and to be part of this uh, small changes. So we need to start in the local level to uh, see the change in this generation. So I'm very glad that I'm, I'm part of that. So thanks yeah. for the, the invitation. I, I feel just gratitude. <laughs> Wonderful. I love that. She says, I feel gratitude for the opportunity to mm -hmm. serve because this is about work and a lot of hard work. Is that right? So what is the first initiative that you're going to work on when you return back home? Um, I'm, when I'm working in this action plan, the, the plan uh, consists in uh, adaptation uh, and mitigation at the same time because it's a small island. 
So I'm getting, I, I'm more confident right now, especially to work with my community, to be part, to be a leader. Mm -hmm. And to, I'm more flexible right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, sharing with all these cultures, with all this island, uh, gives, uh, gave me that. So yes. uh, we are working in so, um, so many projects, so interesting issues at the same time related to culture, related to how to protect the environment, climate change, how to protect reef, marine protected areas. So, mm -hmm. so many information. So I just, I just need time. and. Mm -hmm and just continue to, it's very, sometimes you feel so frustrated with these issues. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just, I don't know, it's difficult to continue. Yeah. And uh, having all these tools, uh, uh, meeting all these people, uh, uh, see what's going on in Hawaii, for example, in terms of technology, in terms of conference. So many different so things. Many, I'm yeah, sure so many when things. you put it all together, yeah. it makes a huge impact on you. As you mentioned, your confidence. Yeah. You're prepared now to go back, yeah, but you probably so. have to have some time to like yeah. take it all in. Yeah. So, Mana, we're going to jump into you as well and say, where are you from? I am from Waimea, Hawaii, the island, mm -hmm. um, and I work for Lili Uokalani Trust as their natural resources manager. Wonderful. So you're already involved, but tell us, what are some of the focal points that this fellowship has caused you to take a look at? Oh, a lot of things. Um, I think first and foremost for me is the relationship component. Um, meeting people like, like Tiare and Blorak from different areas around the Pacific has really been special. But understanding that everybody's looking at problems from a different lens from their specific cultures is it's inspiring. And um, it's really been impactful in my life to know that I have folks in Palau, I have folks in Rapa Nui that I can call to for all kinds of problems and yeah. work together on it. Yeah. That's amazing. So now in your community, both of you have a bit of a larger community than um, the previous guest, um, Bloda, that mm -hmm. we learned. He has about 60 in his community. You said 7,500. And how about you? So I live, I live in Waimea where I think our population is around 5,000. Okay. Um, but I work in a community a um, little, bit, little bit further away, about an hour away in Kona. I'm not sure what the population is, but it's far greater. It's the second okay. largest um, community yeah. on the island. Yes. Okay, wonderful. And so you have a lot of initiatives that I'm sure you're going to jump on when you go back. But tell us, what has this done for you personally? What has the impact of this fellowship had on you as an individual, in addition to the satisfaction of the relationships? Mm -hmm. Professionally, what has it done for you? Well, there's a lot of tools that, that we learned. Um, like today, for example, we learned about DISC. It's a, it gives you a better understanding of your characteristics and your behaviors and how understanding those behaviors will really help you as a leader and working with team, teammates and trying to resolve issues, but also in community meetings and whatnot. Um, so there's several tools that I've used from the previous session that we got together. Um, and... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I keep going back to the, the relationships piece. That's really yeah. what hit me hardest. But, yeah, um, that's fair enough. Yeah. That's good. Relationships are important. Mm -hmm. Everything is built upon relationships and having good relationships. Mm -hmm. And take time. And it does time, take time to energy, build them. Trust. And trust. Yeah. I think good. we, the first year was amazing, but this, this second year is... Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've gone... Time together. We've gone to a couple different areas too, and it's kind of opened up, I think, opened our eyes too to this, this experience of the types of economic development that we could bring back to our places, like Bodak was saying, bringing back jobs, but not just jobs, but jobs that are sustainable and for the, for the environment, jobs that are we're taking care of, whether it be mm -hmm. land or people or children or kupuna, yeah. rather than creating jobs of creating material things of consumption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, really flipping that over and what are, what are the future jobs for our kids mm -hmm. um, that's going to really benefit our community and the world? So tell us, what would you then um, say to someone who is considering getting into this program? What is something that you would say to them, tell them, and make sure you speak loud and clear so they can hear you. And if you want to, you can look right at that camera and let them know. <laughs> Either of them. Well, I would like to say it first. Um, you know, when I first started coming into this, I, I looked at it more personally and how can I, what, what can I get out of it? 
Um, but after being in this experience and experiencing other people and um, the challenges that they're facing, it really put things into perspective for me and made me look more holistically on, on, on problems and issues and how we can really get together to solve all these problems. And like you said, with the hokulea, it was an, it's a special experience for me. Mm -hmm. um, we got to go on a sale, and I know I said one thing that was interesting, that um, we need to network as people. You mm -hmm. look at the mission of the hokulea and, and traveling around the world, and he said, we need to get this network of people around the world, but not geographically separating them, but networking communities together. I and that's a, that. that's a big takeaway for me, and that's how I, I perceive this relationships that we have. Kiana, speak loud and clear and let us know, what would you say to someone who's yeah. considering entering the program? I was talking with a fellow a couple of days ago, and, and I said that now I, I, I think that I start to understand more the word Kuliana. Mm. And I think, uh, I, I like this word because that means a lot that this, this, I think if I can describe this program, I will use that word, Kuliana. It's a responsibility, not with, just with your community, it's also without... The, uh, without us and without the world. Yeah. Just doing a small thing, put a C in your place and spread. I, I like that. that. Yes, plant the seed. Yeah. Start where you are and work to make a difference right where you mm -hmm. are. I think that pretty much sums up what you guys are saying. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. build those relationships. So now, do you have any idea of someone back home in your communities that you would already recommend for this program. Oh yeah. 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 I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're hoping that you guys go back, mention this program that you've been in. Um, and what have they said? Has anyone noticed a difference in you all since you've been involved? I'm curious. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't talked to anybody specifically about it, mm -hmm. but I think I think so. I th yeah. I don't know if you have any. Every time when I, well, at least at last, in last year, when I finished with the first um, step of this journey, mm -hmm. I did some interviews in the radio and in the uh, TV programs in, in, in Rapa Nui. So that inspires a lot. And we had a lot of calls and a lot of people start to ask me about this program. So they start to be more, I don't know, involved mm -hmm. with my process. So, and now they know that I'm finished the second year. So yeah. they are supporting me yeah. too. So yeah, I that think is support nice. is the biggest yeah. piece. And that is, and that is. And so we want to thank you all for what you do. We want to thank you all for joining us as we've been here with Pacific Resiliency Fellows. <laughs> and the some of the fellows who've been involved with the program they've been through this for two years now and they will be graduating july 9th 2019 the mayor and for, i'm sorry the governor governor Ige and first lady will be there thank you for watching at the crossroads and we'll see you next time aloha